Um, exams is you have to review, right? All right. You, I think you know that. Let, let's get going. So I got to get through 10.3 and 10.4. So here we go. So we were doing ellipse. Remember how ellipse equations go? Let me remind you, they are x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Remember that? For ellipse, and then you put a big ellipse, and you have this egg shape, and it's over a, back a, up b, down b, right? So that's basically it's easier than the problem. If you made it through the 10.2 homework last night, you're doing great. If not, come see me. I'd be glad to help you. I'm there like 9 to 10, 9 to 9.50. Monday through Thursday in my office in Science 5, right? I'm there to help. Actually, Mondays I'm upstairs in the Science Building in 280, available for anybody who wants to come for tutoring. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm in Science 5. It's all in the syllabus. So come see me. Be glad to help. So make sure you made it through 10-2. Really important section of homework, the problem. Hardest. Hardest one. These will be easier. These will be easier today. All right. So anyway, so there's the general setup for a ellipse equation. They're telling me the focus is at minus 8, 0. So let me, let me erase this general thing and get to the particulars. If you didn't get that down, it's okay. I'm gonna, it'll be up in a minute again. So let's get to uh, what they're saying. They're saying minus 8, 0. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Boom. There is a focus point at minus 8, 0. And there's vertices, it says, at minus 10. Right there is a vertex point. At minus 10, 0, and over 10, 4, 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, there's the other vertex at 10, 0. So the other focus must be right here as well, huh? At 8, 0. So there's the other focus and the other vertex. Good? Good so far? I just took the information they gave me about the two ver vertex points, the two vertices. Oops, that one's off the screen a little bit. So, and I just put them down. Good. Got the two focuses, the two vertex points. Um, the the egg shape goes like this. Somehow I don't know exactly how tall it is, but you know I just want to get something to look at. Help me, help me kind of start thinking, like that, right? The focus points are always inside the branches, aren't they? Every one of the shapes. Notice that's a consistent, continual pattern. The focus points are always inside the branches. Inside the branches. So, all right, Tuesday it was parabola branches. You know, we would have like a parabola like that, and the little focus point would be inside. Or if the parabola was going up, it'd be inside. Or if the parabola was going down, it'd be inside. Right? Always inside. Now we have two branches come together in an egg shape called an ellipse, and again, the focus points are inside. Okay, so what? What are we supposed to do? Well, we want the equation. So how do you find the equation? Well, it's x squared over a squared, again, plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So how do I know the a? What is the a? I want to remind you not to get hung up on the a and the b like the math Excel show me examples. Sometimes their, their stuff is a little confusing, and it is in this case because they get all technical about it's a, if it's this, it's b. If it's, don't worry about that. If it's under x, it's right left. Because X is right-left. That's an easy way to deal with that, right? If it's under X, whatever you call it, A or B or whatever, if it's under X, it's right-left. So how far right and left from the center to the edges? 10. And back then, 10. So this must be 10 squared. Good so far? Going to be 100, right? Are you, I don't care if you leave it 10 squared or 100 on the test. I'm fine with either one. What about the, uh, what's under y then? How far up and down? Well, I don't know. That's not on my graph. They didn't give me that, did they? I don't know how far up and down to the edges, do I? They didn't tell me. That's, that's the b, right? Well, how am I going to find that? The focus equation. The foci equation, exactly. Remember the focus equation. The the fo to find the foci points, it's just plural of focus, it's, uh, it's the Pythagorean with a minus, remember? Excuse me. <coughs> there we go. <coughs> Excuse me again. Okay, so yes, yeah, so the focus equation is just the Pythagorean with a minus in the middle. Okay, now, do, what is C? C, do you know what is C? 
correct. It's the A. C is how far from the center to the focus point. That's C, which is 8. Does that make sense? So the A, so we get in the hang of the, how these work. The A and the B are how far to the edges. And the C is how far to the focus points. Good. That's different than the parabola equation, which we did Tuesday. In the parabola equation, the A was how far to the focus point, wasn't it? Remember the 4AX or the 4AY on the right side? The A was how far to the focus. Now, for ellipse, and same thing for hyperbola, both, both the sections we're doing today, 10, 3, and 10, 4. A and B are how far to the edges, and C is how far to the focus point. So, the C is 8, the A... Now, oh yeah, now here's, here's where it gets a little technical, but you don't need to. Let me make it easy for you. Math Excel, the show me example, if you click on the show me example button, they get really picky and careful and technical about the A and the B. And they're right. We do need to be careful because they're subtracted. They're subtracted. So we do need to get the right one right. I mean, it matters whether I put the 10 here and find the B. Now, I know you might think, well, Mr. Turner, that's it for sure, because this is A. You said this is A and this is B. Well, I'm just guessing. I don't really know that's A and B. I don't sweat it, because that's too many details. I have a bad memory. I never would have made it in any major that required you to have a good memory, because I have a bad memory. Remember, I always kid my wife. She'll remember things. We've been married 25 years. She'll remember things way back, and what we had for lunch on some trip we took, you know, and I'll be like, she'll be talking about it, and I'll be like, honey, I don't even remember the trip, let alone... The conversation over lunch. Are you kidding me? Your me I always kid her. Your memories, it's like you're already a widow. Your memories are your own. Anyway, so I have a bad memory. So what works better for me is just to say, look, just give me a logical reason for it. So I don't have to remember all these details. Right? I, don't, I, I put A here and B here, but I was just making it up. I don't know that's really A or B. There's some fancy rule that Math Excel has, and I don't care about their rule. I just think a simple logical thought. If I'm subtracting two things, the bigger one has to come first. Right? If you want the answer to be positive. If you're subtracting two things, you've got to put the bigger one first. So that, that's all you need. That's, and that, to me, that's way easier. So whether the 10 goes in the front or the 10 goes in the back, you can't just look and go, oh, X is always A. No, it, sometimes it's B. It just depends, and I don't even know why and when. Who cares? I don't worry about it. But I do want you to know, X is not always A. Y is not always B. You've got to think more than that. It's, that's not the case. So, well, how do you know? The, what I'm saying is the bigger one has to go first. Well, how do you know which one's the bigger one? Well, you tell me. You think, well, it's a lot wider than it is tall. Well, I just drew it that way. Maybe it's, maybe it really is supposed to go way up higher than it is wide. It's not. How do I know? How do I know that it's more wide than tall, other than I drew it that way? How did I know it really is wider than tall, and thus the X is really the bigger one? The 10 is the bigger. How do I know? The foci points are right and left. Remember, the foci are always on the major. This has got to be... Can you, can you see if I write right there? Is that off the screen? The major. The major axis, this is the minor. How do I know? The foci are always on the major, right? This focus point, this focus point, if, they're on the x, if the foci are on the x-axis, then it's wider than it is tall. If the foci are up and down, which they are sometimes, then it's taller than it is wide, and the, that's the major. Does that make sense? Wherever the foci are, that's the bigger axis. So, foci are on the major. They're always on the major. Wherever they are, that's the bigger direction. So, therefore, this thing is wider than it is tall, and the X number must be the bigger one. Call it A, call it B, call it whatever. I know it's the bigger one. See how I know that without a bunch of memory stuff? So, it turns out X is A in this case, but it's not always. Make sense on that? You guys okay? That, that little stuff is what gets a lot of people, so I want to make sure you're okay. So then we solve. 64 is 100 minus B squared. Subtract 100. What's that? Minus 36 is minus B squared. Learn out of room here. So you know B squared is 36. B is 6. So this is 6 squared, and there's our equation. We are done. Everybody okay with that? See how we did that? Questions on that? 
Are we having fun? You guys look so serious. Is this serious? Questions? We good? All right. All right. Find an equation for the ellipse. Graph it. So let's try. Come in here and have an ellipse. Center is 0, 0. Vertex is 0, 7. That's up here. And then what's the B is 4 thing? What's that? Well, that's A or B. You know, remember, that's like what's under X or what's under Y. I don't, I don't know which. Remember, again, I always write it this way, but really, A can be under Y and B can be under X, and I don't really care what the rules are because I don't need it. All I know, though, is the 4 is the other direction. Right? I, I know this is 7, so the 4 must be sideways. See how I know that? Again, see, I don't worry about all the details. It, I already got an up-down, so the 4 must be sideways. So this must be like over 4, up 0. And then this must be back 4. And this must be down 7. And there's my egg shape. Whoa, I'm not drawing so well. There. That's got to be. See how I'm coming up with that? So really, actually, they're putting the B under the X this time, aren't they? But I don't care. I'm not going to worry about that. But I wanted to show you that sometimes B is under X. And I don't even know what their reason is. I guess it's the bigger one. I think they let A be the bigger one. The B is always the small one. I think that's what they're doing. But then it changes when you get to the hyperbola. And then you've got to like rememorize it. And it's just way too complex. Just use some logical thoughts and it'll all be good. All right, so there, so there we go to there. So how do we know um, what, goes, what goes underneath X? Yeah, don't worry, again, don't worry about A and B. Just think X sideways, right? X sideways. So how far sideways? Four squared. Y, up, down. How far up and down? Seven squared. There's the equation. We're done. Good on that? Easy enough? Questions? Everybody got it? All right. If I'm going too fast, grab. All right. So, can you all see that okay? That's hard to that's hard to see. Let me go. There we go. All right. So there's there's the graph they want the equation, basically. All right. Now Notice the center is not 0, 0. It's been moved. Clearly been moved. So what do you do? What does the center do to all these formulas? It's opposite, opposite. Now the book, I mean the program, the show me an example, help me solve it, whatever, uh, it calls it HK. I don't know if you noticed that. They call it HK. You can do it their whole way. I think it's easier just to say it's opposite, opposite. It goes next to x. It goes next to y. It's going to be like this. Right? Whatever's next to x is 3. So that's x minus 3 because that's the opposite of positive 3. What's next to y is negative 3. Opposite of that is positive 3. And then I just need the a squared and the b squared, and I'm there. So far, so good? Right? That's, what, that's, that's not just for ellipses. That's for all the formulas. The parabolas, Tuesday, with the hyperbolas, the second hour today. All these formulas, when the center is not 0, 0, when the center has been moved, you just take opposite of the x. If it's positive 3, you put negative 3. Take opposite of the y, negative 3, you put positive 3. Put that in parentheses next to x and y, and you've got it. That's all you need to do with that. Okay, so what's the a now? Can we tell the a? A is how, how far from here to here. You can't see it on the overhead because, oh, that's interesting. Look how much better that one is. I'm just looking at this one. This one, you can see it. That projector's stinky, huh? That projector's not doing so well. Here we go. So you, you folks, sorry. Look over here. Right? It looks like one, two, three, four jumps to the right, huh? Four jumps to the right. These are the cheap seats. I'm sorry. Did they not mention that? <laughs> All right. Plus four to the right. 
And so, so the A is, so, and that's right left. So I don't know if it's A or B or whatever they want to call it. It's under X. So it's right left because it's right left. All right. And what's under B? Can you see it over there? How far up? Three. It's three up. So three squared. We're done. Right. What is under X is right left. What's under Y is up down. Questions on that one? Y'all good? All right. Okay. So let's try that one. So we've got x minus 3 squared plus 4. Y plus 4 squared is 100. Okay. What's the... we got to... We gotta, you know, find the find the center focus. You know, find everything in graphic. So what's the? So we got We gotta give it the right look. We do a lot of plastic surgery on this thing. Uh, remove the wrinkles. Make it have the look we're looking for. What's the to help us graph? So what's what look do we need? What do we do first? What what are we looking for? What do we have to have on the right side? I thought, I thought you had a pizza there. The way you came in with your arm out? That's the way the pizza guys come in. I thought, sure. All right, yeah, so we got to divide. Sorry, I'm distracting the whole class, huh? All right, divide through by 100. There, divide through by 100. Like that, right? Because you've got to get a 1. Got to get a 1 on the right side, right? Okay, and now what happens on the left side? I divide by 4, top and bottom like that. Good to there? And then make that 100 into 10 squared and the 25 into 5 squared. Now it's got the look. We're ready to graph. We can find anything and everything we need. Right? Are we good? Now we graph. Let's graph. You ready to graph? Let's graph. So how are we going to graph this thing? Where's the... It's not going to work well there. Maybe down here. So where's the center? Opposite, opposite. Remember, it's the opposite of what's next to X and next to Y. So opposite would be positive 3, down 4. Is that good? Over 3, down 4. Here's the center, right? I just do opposite of x, opposite of y, huh? We good there. And now, from that center, I go right and left 10, because what's underneath x is right and left. Right 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right from here you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's the right edge, and then... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right edge, left edge. And then up and down 5. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to run out of room. One, whoop. Um, well, whoop. I got off track a little bit. It's right here, huh? <laughs> Sorry. I'm not doing so good in my movements. So it's supposed to be up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, straight up and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, about right here. So there it is. Looks like a football. Is that good?
Everybody see what I did there? So I, I did the center is opposite, opposite. So positive three down four. So right three, oh, right three. Am I losing marks there? One, two, three. So right three, down four. Here's the center. And then I went right ten, left ten, up five, down five, because that's underneath x and y, ten squared and five squared. Connect the dots, there it is. Now they want to know um, the vertices. Now what do they mean by the vertices? You know what, they, let me be clear on that. The vertices mean the uh, major axis endpoints. So it means this point and this point. They don't want the top and the bottom. They don't call those the vertices. It's a little bit of a naming game here. They want the biggest direction, the major axis in points when they say the vertices. So when they say the vertices, they mean this dot and this dot. That's what they're going to ask you for. So, how do, so we already have the center. The center is... 3, negative 4. That's not on the screen. I'll move it back. So we have the center. 3, negative 4. Now, what do we do to find this vertex point? They want the coordinates of that. That could be hard, but let me make it easier for you. That is my job, right? Um, you just add 10 to the x value and subtract 10 from the x value of the center, right? Because we went right 10 and left 10. So that doesn't change the y value at all. It doesn't change the height. It's just add 10 and subtract 10 from the x value of the center, right? It's from the center. So what will that be? The, ver the ver vertices will be add 10, 3 plus 10, 13, minus 4, and then subtract 10. What's that, minus 7, minus 4? Everybody tracking with me there? See how I did that? Just add 10 and subtract 10 from the x value of 3. Get the two vert vertices, coordinates of the vert vertices, vertex points. All right, and now, last thing, they want me to find the foci, foci points. How am I going to find the foci? Kind of running out of room here. Can I I'm going to erase some of this stuff up here. So how do I find the foci points? What's the foci equation? It's the Pythagorean with a minus, huh? Pythagorean. And, and the foci, it's going to be like about here and about there. I'm just guessing, but I just want you to get a visual on it first off. It's going to be somewhere to the right and somewhere to the left. How do I know? Because the foci are always on the major axis. This one's wider again. So the foci are right and left. If it was taller, then the foci would be up and down, wouldn't they? They're always on the biggest direction, right? So they're somewhere right and left from the center, aren't they? Where? Well, it's a distance of C from the center. Got to find C. So C squared is A squared minus B squared. So you always put the bigger one first. I don't care who's called A and B. 10 is bigger than 5. 10 squared minus 5 squared. So C squared is 100 minus 25 is 75. So C squared is 75. So C is the root of 75. Good to there. C is the root of 75. Got to simplify that with your calculator. Remember how to do that? What is it? Or by hand or 5 root 5. We good? 5 root 5? Oh, you're right. I was testing you. Good job. Yes. 3 root 5, yeah. Because it's 3 times 25. And the root of 25 is 5, right? Well, <laughs> I'm still having trouble, which means, Mr. Heron, that the 5 comes out and the 3 stays in. Yes, thank you. Glad I could help. All right. 5 root 3 is the C. Now, what do we, that's not, that's not yet the whole thing. That means you've got to add the 5 root 3 and subtract the 5 root 3 from the X value of the center. Right? The C is how far from the center, right? A, B, and C are how far from the center, aren't they? So that means it's plus C to the right and back C. In other words, instead of C, let me actually say plus, no, I keep writing, five, oh yeah, 5 root 3, that's right, okay. And then minus 
5 root 3 minus 5 root 3 from the center, right? I need to add 5 root 3 and subtract 5 root 3 from the center, don't I? So I'm just running out of room. I'm going to get rid of this now. I'm just running out of all kinds of room. And I'm going to wrap this one up, and we're going to move on to another problem because this one's been a long one. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take the center again, which is, what is it, 3, negative 4, and I'm going to add 5 root 3 and subtract 5 root 3 from the x value of the center to get to the foci points, foci points. So it is 3 plus 5 root 3 comma negative 4. And can I just stick a minus in there? It's 3 plus and minus 5 root 3. Technically, Math Excel is going to make you list them separately. I don't care in a test. Comma here, I'll write it. 3 minus 5 root 3, comma negative 4. There we go. They wanted everything under the sun, and we gave it to them. Is that okay? Questions on that one? See how we found all that? These are tedious, huh? All this little finding of particular points stuff. No questions? Are we happy? Get it all copied down. Can I go to another one? Good. 15. All right. So um, the main thing to remember on this is when we have x squared and x to the first power or y squared and y to the first power, you must complete, well, it's not number one, you must complete the square. What does that mean, complete the square? That means, number one, get x squared, x to the first together, y squared, y to the first together, Uh, um, yeah. Factor will move numbers to the other side. Factor out numbers in front of x squared or y squared. That's a big first step. Here, that move statement might have not made a lot of sense. Move numbers not with x or y to the other side. Yeah. Okay, what am I talking about? Grab this 1296 and move it over because he's just a plain number. Right? He's just a plain old number. So 36x squared plus 432x. Man, I'm, just, I'm already out of room. So copy down those words because I'm going to flash to a new screen here in a second. 36x squared, bless you, plus 432x, leave a blank. Or you don't need a blank right now, but anyway, whatever. 25y squared plus, no, it's minus. Minus 300y equals minus 1296. All right, do you see what I did first off? I'm doing step one here, which is what? I moved the plain old number over, the 1296, the number that didn't have an x or y with it. That's what I mean by this step. Move the numbers not with x or y to the other side. So the 1296, he doesn't have an x or y, yank him over. Get the x squared and x together, the y squared and y together. Then factor out, factor out the numbers in front of x squared and y squared. So factor out that 36. Use your calculator. What's 432 divided by 36? 9? 12. 12. Factor the 25 out here. That's uh, 412. Good to there. I'm going to go to a new screen. We good to there so far? So you've got to factor out the numbers in front of x squared and y squared. This, there'll be one of these on the test next Thursday. One of these complete the square kind. Okay. 
If you want to get it right, you're going to need to copy it down today and then you'll have it perfectly. No, you'll need to do it on your own. There is a difference between, you know, watching me do something and doing it on your own. Make sure you practice it. It's on the practice exam. It's in the homework. Good to there. Can I go to a new screen? We got it down. All right, I'm going to move on. If you missed it, go to YouTube. All right, so uh, where are we at? 36x squared plus 12x plus blank plus 25 y squared plus 12y plus blank is minus 1296. Did I get that right? Yeah. Everybody got that down? Anybody else need to copy that? Got all that stuff copied. Okay. So we're here. Now what do we do? We got to find the magic numbers. I, I nickname them. How do you find the magic numbers? You got to find what's going to go right there and what's going to go right there to make those things factor as something squared and something squared, right? That's what it means to complete the square. It means to give them just what they need so they'll factor it as the same thing twice, meaning squared, right? So how do you know what they need? And, and by the way, you had to first factor out like I did, right? I factored out the 36 and the 25. A lot of students forget that. They just haven't practiced enough. So you got to practice. So anyway, how do you find the magic number? B over 2 quantity squared. Yeah, remember that? It's B over 2 squared. So you've got to take that B, that's called B, and put it over 2 squared, which is 6 squared 36. So that means add 36. That'll make it factor, right? That's going to be X plus 6, X plus 6 now, isn't it? Makes 12 in the middle, 36 at the back, doesn't it? See how that'll perfectly make it factor? Oh, is it? Did I mess up? Yes, it is. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, does everybody see that 36 is working perfect? See how I found it? You always take the middle number, you put it over 2, and you square it. I'm going to do the same thing for the y in a minute, but I have something else I need to do. Is everybody good to there? Is everybody seeing how that's going to work perfectly, isn't it? That's going to make those parentheses factor x plus 6, x plus 6, meaning x plus 6 squared. That completed his square, made him into a square, which is nice for our graphic, right? All right, now, i got to make sure I don't change anything, though. This is plastic surgery. This is not a lobotomy, right? This isn't changing the mind. We're not changing the person, right? I can't, I can't change anything actually about the equation. I've just got to change the way it looks. So I can't be sticking in a brand new 36 unless I also do it to the other side, right? We can't do that, right? We, if I put a brand new 36 on the left side, then I have to put, i got to add the same thing to the other side of the equal sign, right? Whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other side so that you don't really change anything. So how does that work? Do I, do I just add 36? Is that right? No is the answer. Why is that not right? Didn't I add 36 to the left side? So you add 36 to the right side? You've done the same thing to both sides. No, we haven't. Why not? 36 times 36. Exactly. You see, if I multiplied this out, it would be 36x squared, which it always was from the beginning, plus 36 times 12, whatever that number was. What was that? 432, which it always was from the beginning, plus whatever 36 times 36 is. That would be brand spanking new that wasn't there before. That's what I really did to the left side by sticking in a brand new 36 in the parentheses under the influence of a factored out 36. I really affected the left side by whatever 36 times 36 is. You see. So I've got to really do that on the right side as well. Is it, is it 1296? What is it? It is. So I've got to add 1296 because that's what 36 times 36 is. That's how I really, truly affected the left side and how I must really, truly affect the right side so that I haven't changed anything, really. That makes sense? A lot of people stumble on that. That separates out the better grades from the weaker grades, those kind of steps. It's going to take practice. All right, what about the Y? Grab the, do the same thing, put the negative 12 over 2, square it, negative 6 squared, 36 again. So add 36. The magic number, by the way, is always positive because it comes from squaring, huh? Add 36, but... By putting in a brand new 36 there that wasn't there before under the influence of a 25, 
really I've changed the left side by whatever 25 times 36 is, which is 900, right? I've got to add 900 to the right side. Yeah, right? Everybody see what I'm doing there? Does that make sense? Right? Because if I was to multiply that 25 out, there would be a brand new 25 times 36 there that wasn't there before. That's really how I've affected the left side. It's not just the 36. If I multiply that out, we would see there's really a 25 times 36 there that was never there before, which is 900, and must also be put on the right side. You've got to make sure you really affect both the left side and the right side the same so there's no true changes being made. Okay, so we good with all that scribbling around? So now, what, what has happened on the right side? Well, these cancel, and the right side's 900. The left side, can I erase this? You got it on the YouTube or your notes, but I need room to work here. So let me do that, clean it up a bit here. So, okay, so what do we have? This is 36, this is x plus 6 squared, this is 25, this is y minus 6 squared, if you factor, right? Everybody see that's y minus 6 because it makes minus 12 in the middle plus 36 at the back. This makes plus 12 in the middle plus 36 at the back, so it's x plus 6. It made them factor, didn't it? It completed the square. That, those gave them just what they needed. All right, so... I, maybe I should move that down a little bit. Let me move it down. Here. 36x plus 6 squared plus 25. Y minus 6 squared equals 900. We good to there? Now we're almost there. What do we have left to give it the look we want? What do we do? Divide by that 900, right? Because we've got to have a 1 on the right side. Divide through by the 900, that's a 1. The other side, uh, what, 36 goes into 900, some amount of time, 25? 25. And 25 goes into 936 times, huh? And, and I go, da, da, you can do all the rest now, all the rest. And now that we've got it, having the complete look we want, well, actually, this is now 5 squared, and this is 6 squared, and away you go, right? You can graph it, you can find the center, go right, left, up, down, the whole time, right? Is that good? Yeah. So after you, can, after you can do the square, and then use the number at the end, like, how 30 times, 36 times 36 is equal to 1296. So you're not moving it to the, to the right side. It still stays in the left side also, right? So the original, um, the fact that, that the original 1296 happened to be one of the numbers is purely coincidental. Yeah, so I just, whatever number, they give me 20, 29 million there. I'm just going to move numbers. I'm going to say, get out of my way, move to the right side. So I'm just moving those over to get out of my way. So Because I, I only want X and Y stuff on the left side. So first off, I just moved that 1296 over right here just to get it out of my way. I didn't care what that number was. And then when I put in a brand spanking new 36 under the influence of another 36, I took my calculator, I went 36 times 36, and it turned out it was 1296. Which means I was really, by putting that brand new 36 in there that wasn't there before, I was really adding 1296 to the left side. So I had to also add 1296 to the right side. So this was put in brand new to both sides. This was already there because I just moved it over on step one. So I don't know if I'm answering your question. And then this 36 really 20 is, is a 25 times 36, which is 900. So I had to also add 900 to the other side. One more time, say that question. If you're moving it, I'm not moving it. Okay, so there's two things going on. The first step I moved it, that first negative 1296, that was a movement, so it became positive. But this one is not a movement. It is an adding the same number to both sides. Yeah. Good, yeah, I'm just adding... I'm adding 1296 to both sides, and I'm adding 900 to both sides. Just like when you're solving fraction, you got like x plus 3 is 10, and you subtract 3 from both sides or something. That's all I'm doing. I'm adding 900 to both sides and adding 12. Why am I adding that? Well, because that's what I needed for the magic number right there. When? When they're multiplied, anyway. Yeah, good question. Other questions on that? Does that make sense? What happened there? So practice that. Practice that.
All right, let's try this one. So this one might be interesting. So we've got some vertices. It, uh, let, I would definitely draw a picture, even though they don't require a picture. Be well, it does say graph. Huh? Be helpful to us. So uh, let's put those vertices on there. Over four, down six, and over four, up two. Those are my vertices. My focus is over four up one. There's a vertex, vertex. Focus. Okay. Good so far? Got a couple vertices? Got to focus. So, let me give you a second. Let me ask you a couple questions. Is this thing an up, down, or a right, left? How, how do we know? Is it up, down? How do we know? Just because those vertices are up, down? Yeah, because those vertices are up, down. And the focal point is, well, you've only got one focal, so it's the vertices, right? The vertices are up and down. And remember, the vertices are the major axis. They're always the major. Remember I said that back here? I said somewhere. The vertices mean major axis endpoints, right? So when, they, when I see these vertices up and down, I think, oh, so it's up. So it's, it's like this. It's more up down than it is sideways, right? That's the major axis. Wherever the vertices are, those are the major. The other two endpoints, uh, the side points, wherever they are, you know, somewhere like that, I don't know, they're not called vertices. The vertices, when they say vertices, they mean uh, this is the major axis. So the major axis is up, down. Okay. Do you know what we really need to find is we need to find the center. I'm not, I don't know what's right there. I'm just, I'm just doing stuff. Can you find the center? How do we find the center? We've got to find the middle of those two vertice points, don't we? the middle of the vertices. How do we find the middle of those vertices? What are we going to do? Well, I can tell you it's over 4 something, isn't it? Right? Because this point is over 4, and this point is over 4. So it's on this lie. It's, 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 it's in this location somehow, right? It's over 4. It's just a matter of how high up or down. You with me? Is that making sense? It's somehow on it's somehow on this line, isn't it? It's over four for sure. But how far right? Because these are both four. But how far up or down? How do we do that? We've got one of them is up two, and the other one is down at negative 6, right? Up 2, down at negative 6. One of them's up 2, the other one's down at negative 6. I've got to find the middle of 2 and negative 6, don't I? How do you find the middle of two numbers? Yeah, if I said, hey, you got a 73 and an 89 on your two exams. How do you find the middle of those two numbers? It's called average. We add them and divide by two. We know how to find the middle of two numbers, huh? You add them and divide by two. It's called average. That's the middle of two numbers. So we're thinking, oh, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. So you're saying that we've got a two and a negative six, and we need the middle. So if I add them... And divide by 2. So 2 plus negative 6 divided by 2. That makes sense? That would be negative 4 over 2, negative 2. So it's over 4, down 2, right there. Over 4, down 2 is the center of the ellipse. Is that good? That often gets students trouble. Everybody taking note of that? So you add it and divide by 2. So there's the center. The rest is probably pretty easy, right? Now that we got the center, um, we can write the equation. When it comes to writing the center, I mean the equation, we need the center information. So what's next to x? 
in the parentheses. I'm writing the equation right now. X plus rest. Yeah, you look, you look, and you say opposite, opposite. Remember, you look at the the center of the ellipse. Four, negative two. You do opposite, opposite. So what's the opposite of four? A positive four. It'd be minus four. Opposite of negative two, positive two. Right. That's what the math Excel calls H and K. You can do it that way if you want. Same thing. I'm just saying, look, it's just opposite, opposite. Whatever you want to call it, it's opposite, opposite. So opposite of those two. Now, what goes under X? How far left and right, which I have no idea right now. What goes underneath Y? How far up and down to the edges? How far up and down is it from the center to the vertical edges? Is it 4? Yeah, from four, from. Negative 2 down to negative 6, or negative 2 up to positive 2, that's a jump of 4, so that'll be 4 squared under the y, right? Up, down. How far from the center to the edges up and down goes under y, because y is up down. We good? It's 4 up, 4 down. Now, how do I find what's underneath x? Focus time. Focus equation, Right? Yeah, let's go look at the focus equation, and it should have the story for us. What does the focus equation say? C squared is A squared minus B squared. It's the Pythagorean with a minus. C squared. Oh, and what is C? Right there. C is how far. That's C. C is how far from the center to the focus point, huh? Right? Remember, A and B are how far from the center to the edges. C is how far from the center to the focus. Right? So how far from down 2 to up 1? Must be 3, right? Isn't that up 3? Up 1, 2, 3. Right? Because we're down 2, we've got to go to up 1. So C is 3. So 3 squared is A squared minus B squared. So 3 squared is A. Do I know A? Now, is the A X or Y? Who cares? Well, I no, actually, no, no, I do care a little bit. Um, I want to put the bigger one first, right? Because this is subtracted. So you've got to put the bigger one first. Which one's bigger? Is this one bigger up? Is this graph bigger up down or bigger right left? It's bigger up down. So this has got to be the up down coming first, right? What's the up down? That's the 4. Right? It's up 4, isn't it? You guys with me? Is that making sense? Questions I can answer? So um, I'm totally running out of room here. So this is going to be, I squeeze it in over here. It's going to be off the screen. 9 equals 16 minus p squared. Almost on the screen, huh? It's right coming down to here. 9 equals 16 minus b squared. And then subtract 16. A7 is negative b squared. So b squared is 7. B is the root of 7. So this is the root of 7 squared, or just 7. I don't care how you write it on the test. Root of 7 squared, or just 7, or... Fine, either way. You can write that one as four, the other one underneath y is 4 squared or 16, whatever. I don't care, we're done. That's the equation. Does that make sense? Did you track with all that? Yeah, it's whatever. It's not multiple choice on the test, so I'm not interested in even thinking about it. Questions on the, on the work? Okay, so the focus equation, okay? Everybody clear on the focus equation? Especially with the A minus B. I see a lot of people get messed up on that. And the bigger, when you subtract two things, the bigger one has to come first. How do I know which one's bigger? Well, it's taller than it is wide. So the tall, on this one, the up-down has to come first in the subtraction. The up is three on that. Is that good? This is the kind of thing, really, I, I, I really, like I was saying at the start of class, I'm hoping there's a great recovery on this next exam for y'all. I hope, hope that happens for y'all because it was a big nosedive on the second exam. Average went from like 81 to 61. It dropped like 20 points. And you guys were my highest scoring pre-calc class, and, and then you were the lower class on exam two. So that means I know you can do it, 
but something happened on exam two. Um, so anyway, so let me just make sure you're clear on how you study for an exam. To just do the homework and then take the exam without looking at the practice exam, you might as well just plan to be in here another semester because that's just not going to happen. It just will not work. That's crazy. That's just crazy. I would have never. Well, I tried that once on a prep physics test. So I did do that once. I got a flat F on uh, calc-based physics where I was taking that in junior college. And then I learned my lesson. Like, whoa. I did all the homework, but I did it all the night before. You know, I put everything off, got way behind, did all the homework for my calc-based physics the night before. So I, I barely kind of sort of knew it. That doesn't work. You can, you can get away with that in some GE classes sometimes because it's mainly just facts. You know, you just got to memorize facts. Uh, but not in math and science, right? I tried that, got a straight F the next day on my physics exam. So you have, to, you have to go over this stuff and over it. Don't fool yourself. Take out that practice exam. If you think you know it, take out that practice exam and say to yourself, all right, do you really know it? Do it now. Take the blank practice exam, solve those problems, check your answers at 100% right, then you really know it. Otherwise, you're telling yourself sweet little lies, which, you know, you, you know the old saying, right? If you deceive yourself, who's deceived? Yourself, right? Because the truth, no, nobody else will be deceived on Thursday. On Thursday, the, the truth will come out about what you really know or don't know. So anyway, so let me just encourage you. I'm not sure what happened on exam two, but you've got to spend time on that practice exam going over and over and over. And, and I told you my wife would redo all the homework. She would laugh at the practice exam. She would think, that's not enough practice. So to not even do the practice exam, honestly, that's probably not a person headed to a university to get a math or science degree. No way. Somebody that has those kind of habits, it's not going to happen. This, this is the weeding ground right here at junior college. We're weeding out those who are real students from those who are not. I don't say that with any harshness. I want you to all be. But that is my job, is to say, yep, this person's got it. No, this person's not willing to do what it takes to make it. So, so, so think all that. I hope, I hope that I say that so you'll realize this is what it takes in math science. The people who got A's and B's didn't get that by casualness. They didn't get that because they just understood it the first time in lecture and they never had I didn't. Maybe they're way smarter than me, but I had pretty good success and I had to study like a dog. I had to work. I had to give my life. I had to give, really, I had to give it my life in those years. Math and science was my life. I would redo these and redo these and redo these until I could really do them. Don't fool yourself on the exam, right? I remember I had to take, to get out on the final end to get my master's degree, I had to take an oral exam in front of three professors. That really scared me. That, that was going to be the final, we all had to, to get out of Cal Poly to get a master's degree in math. You have to, you take, they take your three hardest classes, well, the hardest, yeah, three pretty much hardest classes in your grad program, and at the end of the time, you're, those three professors show up in the, in the grad student's room, and you go to the board, and they fire questions at you, and you do them on the board in front of your three professors while they watch. That scared me quite a bit. And so I remember getting ready for that exam, looking over some of the proofs that we had done in those classes, and I would, I would look at some of them, and I'd go, okay, yeah, yeah, I know that proof, I know that proof. I could do that if they asked me that. And then I thought, really? Really? I don't want to fool myself. Because on that day, they will know. There will be no secrets. They can ask me for more, for less. They can do whatever they want. They're in control. It's not even just a written exam. They're just going to ask whatever they want based on the class right then. So I thought, do I really know that? Okay, let me see. So I, set, I remember sitting in the Cal Poly library, setting aside the notes for this one difficult proof, and then just like working through it. Okay, I think I know, I think I know. I'd start with a blank piece of paper, working through. I remember getting about halfway through and getting stuck. Go, oh, what's that next step? What, what do they do? I thought, shoot, I don't want to do this in front of them. So I'm getting out my notes. I went, oh, yeah, that's right. You moved the thing. And then I finished it up, and I said to myself, you don't know it, Brett. You don't know it. Don't lie to yourself. Truth is coming out. So next day, Cal Poly Library, I remember thinking, all right, all right, I'm going to try that proof. And, I, and I, thought, I got it. I think I got it. I tried the proof. I got further, and I got stuck right near the end again. I remember saying, shoot. Got the notes out. Went, oh, yeah, that little thing at the end. Said to myself, you don't know it. Don't lie to yourself. <laughs> Third day, got it out, wrote it top to bottom without looking at my notes. 
and then they never put it on my oral exam. But anyway, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just reality. That's what people are doing. That's what they're doing. All right, if that's any help. And the hyperbole is I'm using up a lot of our time giving speeches about studying, but that is what it takes. All right. Let's try this. One. They, they still, I still look like a fool, truthfully, if you want to know. They, they asked me some figure eight problem, which I'd never seen before. I thought that was so mean. They asked me some crazy thing I'd never seen before. One, my topology instructor. She was funny. She looked like my grandma. Isn't that funny? I remember the first day of class. She looked like my grandma. I thought, my grandma doesn't know math. This, this grandma knew math quite well. And uh, anyway, she asked me some figure eight problem. I, none of us, she asked all the grad students. None of us figured it out. We all got it wrong. Look like fools, but, but we got enough right to get through anyway. So anyway, um, all right, so let's take a look at this. They're giving us a fo two focus points, and then the length of the major axis is 16. Two focus points and the length of the major axis is 16. So this one's tricky. Let's put this on the graph here. So um, focus point is 8, negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 1. And uh, negative 4, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. So we have those two focus points. Two focus points like that. And the length of the major axis is 16. Okay. Yeah, this is a hard one. This is a, this is a very challenging one. You know what you need to do right now is you need to find the center. Can you find the center? So go ahead and find the center like we just talked about doing, right? Find the center. That'll really help you. Don't worry about the major axis 16 thing yet. First, find the center. So how do you find the center? What do you do? Yeah, you take those two x values. The, the negative 1, that's, that's the y value. That's not changing, right? We just grab the two x values to find the center. Remember, you add and divide by 2, right? Because you've got to find the average, the middle, of negative 4 and, and positive 8. So add negative 4 and positive 8 divided by 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2. So that means over 2, over 1, over 2, down 1 right there. Over 2, down 1. That's the center. Does that make sense? How we found that? I took the two x values, negative 4 and positive 8, added them and divided by 2. That's how you find the middle of any two things, right? Okay, now, now that we have that center, let's use the major axis is 16 fact. What do we do for major axis is 16? What does that mean? What is the major axis? Is it major sideways or major up down on this one? Sideways because the foci are sideways. Remember, the foci are always on the major. So the foci are going sideways, so the major is sideways. So when it says major axis 16, that means the total width sideways is 16, which means from the center, I'm going to go how far right and how far left? Eight each direction. That's what they're telling me. To hit the edge. Remember, the focus is not the edge. I hope you realize it's gonna, the graph's going to go beyond the foci points. Right? Foci are inside the shape. The edges are beyond the foci, right? So I've got to go 8 to the right. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2 beyond the focus point, huh? I went 8 to the right. So this must be a 10. Negative one. Is that on the screen? No. All right, let me back it up. That, that projector, they've got to give me a new one in here. I'm sure that's the top of their priority list. 10, negative 1. Right? See what I did? I went 8 to the right. Another way is you could have just added 8 to the center. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, how about that, guys? Just take the 2 negative 1, just add 8 to the x value. It's 10 negative 1, huh? Does that make sense? Because I went 8 to the right, just add 8 to the x value for the center. And then how about to the left? Just subtract 8 from the x value. So 2 minus 8, it's negative 6, huh? So it's 8 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 to the left, sure enough, negative 6, negative 1. So those are the edges of the shape with the focus points inside. Good? So now we can write the equation. Can we? Are you okay with that to there? Let me erase this, write the equation over here. 
So the equation then, x squared over a squared, y, oh, actually, y squared over b squared. It's supposed to be, instead of, uh, the center's not 0, 0. Center's 2, what is it, 2, negative 1. So that'll be opposite, opposite. So x minus 2 squared, y plus 1 squared, right? Because the center's 2, negative 1, opposite, opposite. That's the hk that they use in the a math Excel Show me example stuff. Okay, now what's the x? What goes underneath x? What squared goes underneath x? Well, how far is it to the right? To the edge. And the left? To the edge. It's 8 each direction. So this is 8 squared. To the edge. It's only 6 to the focus point, but it's 8 to the edge, right? What goes underneath x is how far to the edge. How do we find y? How far up and down to the edge? We can't tell on the picture. How do we find the y? What goes under with y, I mean? The focus equation. We almost always do that, huh? So let's go to the focus equation. The foci equation, c squared is a squared minus b squared. Pythagorean theorem with a minus. The c is how far to the focus point. How far is that? How far from the center? How far from the center to the focus point? Six. 6 to the right. So this is 6 squared. Now, here we go. Got to be a little careful. You, you have to be careful to know which one goes in the front, A or B. I mean, I mean, you know, is it the number under X? Well, yeah, the X comes first because this is wider. Right? When you subtract two things, the bigger one goes first. This is wider than it is tall, so the X number goes first. Right? I wish I had done one where they goes in the back. Sometimes they do. So I don't... Wish I'd seen that, but we didn't happen to run into one. I'll put that one on the test. No, I, it might be. I don't know. You, you know how to do it, right? It's, if, if they, it's the same thing. You just, just identify whether they're giving you the bigger number or the smaller number. If it's bigger, it goes in the front. If it's the smaller, it goes in the back. Everything else is the same. So, um, so there we go. Solve for B. Kind of running out of room. So 36 is 64 minus B squared. Subtract 64. What is that? 28. Negative 28 is negative b squared. So b squared is positive 28. Root it. Root it. B is, what is that? 2 root 7. So there we go. It's 2 root 7 squared. Or you could just make it 28. Because that's what 2 root 7 squared is. 28. Huh? Either way, I don't care. Test, I don't care. Either way. Good on that? Does that make sense? Questions on that? I want to do one word problem and then on to hyperbolas. I'm just going to, have to hit them briefly. But they're the same thing, almost exactly the same. It's good we've done a good job in ellipses here. Everybody got that down? I'm going to flash off of that. You got it? Going, going, going. Okay. So there will be, there will be one word problem that's either hyperbola, no, parabola or ellipse on the exam next week, for sure. So next Thursday, they'll, I'll either give you one like this, an ellip, ellipse word problem, or I'll give you a parabola. There won't be a hyperbola, the last section we're about to do, uh, because we don't do word problems in that section. There's just, there's just too much to do, so I cut them out. So um, anyway, so, but, but make sure you're aware. There's either going to be like a satellite dish problem, right? We did a couple of those in the parabola section on Tuesday. Remember, satellite dish, find the focus point. Right? They'll either be one of those or maybe a bridge. There was also a, uh, wasn't there like a, a, a hanging cable or a bridge, parabolic, right? One of those kind of parabola word problems. Or there's going to be one of these elliptical word problems. There'll be one word problem from that section. Um, okay. So how do, we, how do we do it? It'll be on part one also because all the ellipse stuff is on part one, parabola, hyperbola. I've had a lot of students in the past on this exam uh, um, I mean, I mix, I have, you know, various versions of the exam, and I change them up, and get them, I get them off publisher's web, website. Anyway, um, so I've had a lot of students do this question over the years and um, read it and go, okay, yeah, yeah, it's a bridge, and they, they put a bridge like that, you know, and then they go, okay, that looks like a parabola. I think, I think they're just looking at it, and they go, that looks like a parabola, so I'm going to use y squared is minus 4, it's actually be x squared, is minus 4ay, and then they do equations and stuff, but that's all completely wrong. Why? Why is it not a parabola? How do you know that that bridge, although it looks like a parabola, is really not 
that kind of curvature? Because it says so. Yeah. I never know what to do about that. You know, it, I'm like, hmm, are they reading the question? Right? So it says semi-elliptical. Don't miss that. You guys be the first group ever. Well, I mean, I'm not talking about one person doing it. I'm talking, I usually have 15 people out of a class of 40 that write parabola equations on an ellipse question or ellipse words on a parabola. So, right, it's just saying it straight out. So I don't know what else to do to help with that. Make sure you're reading the question, right? It says semi-elliptical. So even though, you know, now what is semi, maybe, I think that picture is what's throwing people off. They just think bridge, parabola. But remember what semi means? What's a, what's a semicircle? Half. It means half. So a semi-ellipse is half an ellipse, so it's half an ellipse. That curvature is elliptical curvature, which is a different kind of bending than per- parabolic curvature. It doesn't aim everything at a, at a focus point. It's different. Anyway, so all right, so make sure you pay attention uh, to that. So, so I'm using on this one ellipse equations, right? I'm not using parabola equations. Of course, you know that because we're in the ellipse homework. I mean, you're not going to have any problem in the homework, but on the test, it's all mixed up. So pay attention to the word. I think maybe that's the deal. They probably didn't spend enough time with the practice exam, so they just did homework. So, all right, so there we go. There's the ellipse equation, and um, the bridge has a span of 60 feet. So that means 60 feet all the way across. Maximum height of 10 feet. That means this is up 10, isn't it? This is over 0, up 10. You with me? So this must be over 30, huh? Because it's 60 total width. We good? So that means I've got my equations ready to go here. The center's 0, 0 on this one, by the way, isn't it? The center's right here at 0, 0. So I don't need to put anything next to x or y. But underneath x is 30 squared. Underneath y is 10 squared. Right? Because y is up, down. x is right, left. It's right and left 30. It's up and down 10. There's my equation for my ellipse. Good to there. See how I came up with that? And then, now for the question. Find the height of the arch at a distance of 20 feet. From, from the center, I should say. So, like, what if they're building a tunnel on the highway, right? And they're worried about semi-trucks being too tall, scraping the top. That's something they should figure out in the engineering stage before they build it, right? And so how would they calculate how high, you know, if they're thinking we're going to put a highway underneath this bridge and we want to make this bridge be curved like an ellipse because we just think that's cool, right? The city wants a nice elliptical tunnel for stuff, okay? And and we know, you know, I'm just making this practical, 20 feet from the center. We know if you go out 20 feet, about right there, right, this is 20 because this is 30 all the way to here, right? We know if you go out 20 feet, we want, to need, we want to know how high this is going to be, right? If you go out 20 feet either direction, right, 20 feet either way, how high is that going to be? So make sure it's high enough so the semi-truck doesn't scrape the wall there. If that's the end of the highway, right, 20 feet as far as they can go, 20 feet each way from the center, how high is it going to be? So anyway, so that's our question. So basically, that means this is the point over 20 up H, isn't it? Or Y, if you want to just use Y, call it Y. Call it Y, call it H, call it whatever you want. Got to find that Y, that H, that height. Huh? So what do I do? That's an, that's an XY point on the graph. That's on the ellipse. That means you plug in the 20 for X and the Y for Y because it makes the thing true. So plug in 20 for X and Y is just Y. So I get 20 squared over 30 squared plus y squared over 10 squared equals 1 and solve that for y. And I'll find the height of the ellipse at 20 feet off center. So how do I do that? Well, um, I would just jump this to the other side. Four. I don't have any four. It's a y. Oh, it's a y. It's a y. Yeah, it's just y. That good? Anything else in my handwriting? Is it all good? Let me know. I, I'm a scribbler. Um, all right, so we got y squared over 10 squared. Oh, let's make that 100. Is 1 minus, what is that, 400 over 900? 
Good so far? I'm just solving for y. I just jumped the 20 squared over 30 squared to the other side, became 400 over 900. Solving for y, what do you do next to solve for y? Multiply both sides by 100. Going to distribute, so we get y squared is 100 minus 400 over 9. It turns out it'll cancel. You can just use a decimal for all this stuff, and then just root it. And you'll have y. So whatever y comes out to be, y comes out to be. That's the height of the ellipse, 20 feet from center. See how the axis system helps us? There's not really an axis system when you're driving under a bridge. There's not an axis system really there. We just made that up, put it on top of the bridge, because it helps us with the work, helps us with the equation, right? See how math is made up to describe things that are real? That's a perfect picture of it right there. There's not really axis systems floating around the world on things, right? We just make that up to help us write the equations and solve real life problems. All right, we gotta go to hyperbolas. Okay, so here we go. So we're talking about hyperbolas. Now, how do hyperbolas compare to these other ones? It's almost exactly the same. Basically, they're just going to have a minus in the middle instead of a plus. That's all it's going to do. In fact, actually, let me, let me do these vertical. It'll be easier for you to see. So, um, so I'll do one here, and I'll write the equation. X squared over A squared minus Y squared over B squared is 1. See, it has a minus in the middle instead of a plus. Everything else is the same. And what it's going to be is it's going to be two branches on the x-axis versus, if you put the y in the front, if you make it y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared, the two branches will be on the y-axis. Does that make sense? So it matters because now we have subtraction in the middle for the hyperbola equation instead of adding. It matters who's in the front. It matters which one's in the front because that tells you which direction the two branches of the hyperbola go. So if x is in the front, the branches go right left. If y is in the front, the branches go up down. And they're turned away. I always think they have a negative relationship. This is how I remember it. I don't know if I already said that. Negative sign in the middle, the two branches have turned away from each other. They have a negative relationship. If you have plus in the middle, the branches turn towards each other, make the egg shape, the ellipse, right? All right. And if you just have one letter squared, then you've only got one branch. That's a parabola, isn't it? So there's my little way of helping myself remember. But you just put them on your 3x5 card for sure. Have these on your 3 by 5 card. Now, what's the A and the B? Well, you can guess. The A is, you know, negative A and positive A. It's where the things hit. Same thing here. Positive A and negative A. It's where the uh, branches hit. Is that good? Now, I want to give you some more details now. That's supposed to be an A. It made it look like a 9, didn't I? Okay, so now, let me give some more details. There are also focus points, C and negative C, inside the branches. See how the focus points are always inside the branches? So here, plus C, minus C. So the focus points, and there's a focus equation. Guess what it is? It's exactly the same as the other one, except... Plus in the middle. It's the actual Pythagorean theorem. It's the same for both. Everybody see that? So here's a nice, easy way to remember the ellipse information and the hyperbola information. These are very, very similar. Basically, whatever sign you have in the main equation, like in hyperbola we have minus, then you have the opposite of that in the focus equation, plus. In the ellipse... The main equation has plus, so the focus has minus. Does that make sense? For both ellipse and hyperbola, whatever sign you have in the main equation, it's the opposite in the focus equation.
And the focus is the Pythagorean theorem exactly for the hyperbola. That's how you find your focal points. Good so far? Everybody got that basic facts down? I'm going to go to a new screen and give you a little more information. All right, so they want me to graph. Let's go to the particulars of this example. Center is at 0, 0. We'll move the center in a minute. But it's going to be just like moving the center was for the ellipse, just opposite with x, opposite for y. It's all the same. Center is 0, 0. Focus is 0, 10. So that's up here. 0, 10. That's the focus point. The vertex is 0, 6. So it's about here. Over 0, up 6. So it must go like this because this is the vertex. This is the focus. And same thing down here. It's going to be the same thing opposite side. This is going to be over 0, down 6, over 0, down 10. This is the focus. This is the vertex. Good like that? Good so far? Got the main idea? Now they want me to find the equation and graph the equation. One thing they're going to ask right away is they're going to say, what's the, trans, the transverse axis? What does the word trans mean? It means across. Transverse axis is the one that cuts across. So that's the y. So it's, you know, it's up and down. Now, for an up and down hyperbola, the transverse is y. That's the, that's the axis that the graph cuts across. It's the y-axis, right? So this one, they're going to say, what's the transverse axis? It's the y-axis for this one. If the, graph, if, the, if the hyperbola goes sideways, then it's x. Okay, next, they want the equation. Okay, so when I write the equation, who's going to go in the front? Is it x in the front or y in the front? Since it's up-down, y goes in the front. Yeah, whatever direction. So it's y in the front, x in the back. And it's equal to 1, notice. It's equal to 1 just like the ellipse equation. It's exactly the same, except it's got a minus in the middle. If, this, if these branches went right-left, then I would put the x squared in the front and the y squared in the back. If it's up-down, since ours is up-down, y squared goes in the front. All right. What's the A? Do we know the A? The A is how far from the center to the edge, like it always is. It's just 6. Good so far? So same thing as ellipse. It's how far from the center to the edge. Up, down. Up, down is always what goes under Y, right? Again, Again, don't worry about the A and the B. Math Excel make this big deal about if it's A, if it's the front, and B, if it's the I don't even know what their rule is. I just say, look, if it's up down, it goes under Y. If it's right left, it goes under X. So up down is 6, that goes under Y. Now, how do I find the B? What do I always do at this point? The focus equation, right? So we go to the focus equation. This is so much the same stuff, which is kind of nice. So the focus equation, c squared, and this one is actually with a plus. It's really the Pythagorean theorem because the main equation has minus for hyperbola, so the focus is opposite, has plus. What's the c? It's how far from the center to the focus, like always. So that's 10, huh? The c is 10. See how it's exactly the same as the ellipse stuff? And, in fact, it's even a little easier. When it comes to the a squared plus b squared, notice they're added. So who cares what the order is? I had to be all careful and, and intentional about when it came to the other focus equation for the ellipses because there was a minus in the middle. So I had to be really careful when you subtract two things. You've got to make sure you have the bigger one in the front. But for the, for the hyperbola with the focus equation having plus in the middle, it doesn't matter. Don't even sweat it. Who cares who A and B are? They're added. It doesn't matter what the order is. So I'll just put the 6 here, and I don't even know if that's right. Who cares? And just solve for B. Make sense? But for the subtraction one back on the ellipse, you had to be intentional and careful to put the bigger one first when you subtract things. All right. Subtract 36. Subtract 36. What's that? 100. 100 minus 36. What is that? 64 is B squared. Root it. Root it. B is 8. 
B is 8. So this is 8 squared. We good to there? I'm going to go to a new screen and do a little bit more if you've got that part down. Everybody okay with that? Questions on that? See how I found all that? Questions I can answer? All right, let's go to a new screen because a little more. I want to show you about the graphing on the same one. Same question still. All right, so where were we? We were at um, y squared over 6 squared minus x squared over 8 squared. Yeah, oh, good. I'm glad they do that. y squared over 6 squared minus x squared over 8 squared equals 1, right? We all good to there? Everybody got that copy down? I want, to, I want to help you notice something. It doesn't matter which number down below is bigger now. It just matters which one's in the front, huh? Remember for the ellipse? We were all into which of these numbers was bigger because that was the major axis, and that's where the focus points would be, right? Not so when it comes to hyperbola. I'm glad we happened upon an example that exactly shows that because, look, the x actually has the bigger number underneath. has the 8, doesn't it? But this thing is not right-left, and the focus points are not right-left, are they? They're up-down because y is in the front. So when it comes to the hyperbola, one key difference is hyperbola is subtraction. So when you subtract two things, what really matters is the order, right? And who's coming first. So who's coming first is why that makes it an up, down, and the focal points up and down. Make sense on that? Is that good on that? I haven't even had a chance to tell you what the, the focal points. Uh, yeah, I don't have time. The, the hyperbola is the set of all points that have the same difference in distances between the two focal points. Anyway, we're not going there. If you want to go there, come by off stairs. I'd be glad to talk all about that with you. Anyway, let's get back to business, right? Does so everybody make sense of that? So when it comes to hyperbola, we're not, we're not concerned with which, which one of these is bigger. We don't care. We care which one's in the front. That's what tells us which direction the thing's going, up, down, and where the focal points are, up, down, not who's bigger. For the ellipse, it was all about who was bigger, right? That was the major axis, that's the major direction, and you know, if, this was a if this was a plus in the middle here, then this would be an ellipse going sideways, wouldn't it? And the focus points would be right and left, wouldn't it? Because the 8 is bigger, the x would have the bigger in that case. But it's not a plus, it's a minus. All right, so getting back to it. So now, looking at this, how do we actually graph this thing? It's made a little bigger than I wanted. Let me make that a little smaller. So y squared over 6 squared minus x squared over 8 squared is 1. Okay, let me show you the particulars. Now, I know you feel like, well, didn't we just graph it? Well, I want to show you about the dotted box, the particulars. Mainly, I want to show you, how do you know how wide or narrow the branches are? Here's how we do it. Pretend that's a plus for a minute. If that was plus... This would be an ellipse, an oval, an egg, right? And what would we do to graph it? What would we do with that 6? It's under y, so what would I do? I'd go up 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, boom, and down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because it's y. y is up, down. And what do we do with that 8? Since it's under x, right 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1, 2, 3. Go ahead and write this down. This is what we're going to do. It's just one small change at the end. I think, is that 8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah. Right? I'd go right 8, left 8, up 6, down 6. And I would draw an oval. I'm not going to do that. Instead, because it's really a minus in the middle instead of a plus, it's really going to be a hyperbola, not an, not an ellipse, you put a dotted box. So go ahead and do this. Put the dotted box. So instead of drawing an oval through those four points, you let those four points direct you to a dotted box. Now, whenever we put something dotted on a graph, we're saying it's not really part of the graph. It's just there to guide the graph, right? So these are just guidelines. Everybody got that down? So instead of drawing the oval, we started exactly the same as we would for an ellipse. We put the up 6, down 6, right 8, left 8. But we made a dotted box instead of an oval. Now, the purpose of the dotted box is to hold the diagonals at just the right inclination. So start from the center and shoot out the four corners with a dashed line. 
because that's going to be an asymptote line. That will guide how big the branches get, how, how rapidly they get bigger. Shoot out the other corner. Shoot out all four corners with a dash. Whoops, mine didn't go so good there. So four no, dashed lines. That one happens to be the center. They will move the center sometimes. So our center is zero, zero. Good. Now, where do the branches, so everybody got that? So all that dotted stuff is going to serve to help us. In fact, these are the asymptote lines. Those are two, really, really they're two diagonal lines, aren't they? One of them starts lower left and goes through the upper right. That's one diagonal line, and the other one starts upper right and goes down through the lower left. There's two diagonal asymptote lines, and those will hold the graph. Now, where's the graph go? Does this graph go up, down, or right, left? This graph, because Y is in the front, is branches up, down. Now, where do you put the branches? You start right in the middle of the box, and you, and you open a branch, and it, goes in, and it goes closer and closer to the asymptote line forever. Same thing down below. Start right in the middle of the box and get over to the asymptote lines. That tells you how wide the branches are. Those asymptote lines, their, their angle, you know, how they're inclined, tells you how the branches open. The branches follow the asymptote lines, the diagonals of the dotted box. So that's specifically how we do an accurate hyperbola graph. Last piece of information is they're going to ask you in the homework on various questions for the asymptote line equations. How do we find those? Well, I'm going to give, give you it real easy. It's always y. Look, look at these. So this line right here, that's one asymptote line that has a positive slope. And this is an asymptote line with a negative slope because it's going down. Huh. So it's going to, now how do you do the slope, how do you do an equation of a line? These are lines. Isn't it mx plus b? Isn't that how we do the equation of any line? It is. mx plus b. What's the m? m is slope, right? Slope. Let me get rid of the b. I'll talk about, well, you tell me, what's the b? It goes through the origin, zero. The b is zero in this case, right? So I'm just going to go mx. And what, what is the M again? It's rise over run. It's slope. Right? Isn't that how you write the equation of any line going through the origin? The B is zero. Right? The Y intercept is zero. And the slope is rise over run. Rise over run. Well, okay. So how do we know rise over run? Well, you tell me. From this dot to this dot, which is two dots on the line going up, what's the rise and what's the run? It's the box. It's the 6 and the 8, which comes under Y. No surprise. Rise. Y. And X. Run sideways X. That's all you got to do. These are really easy. Just grab whatever's underneath Y, what is it, whatever's underneath X. Boom. And we got to reduce that, right? So we're going to make it 3 fourths. But everybody see that? Again, don't worry about A and B. This is where math XL will go. Oh, the, the asymptote formula is y equals a over bx, unless it's b over ax, because then, you know, blah, blah, blah. who cares about all that? Look, it's rise on the top. Rise. Where do I find rise? Under y. I don't care what they call it, a or b. It's whatever's underneath y has to be rise, right? So this is y equals 3 fourths x, when I reduced it, right? But one of them's going up positive, and the other's going down, exactly the same slope, but down, so negative, plus or minus, three-fourths x. There's the equations of the two asymptote lines. Make sense? So this is three plus three over negative four, or is it just negative three-fourths? How does that work? Write three down four. Oh, okay. All right, let's, you have, everybody got that copy down? We got to do a little bit more than this. Okay, so number 12, 
So the center is at 4, negative 2, and the focus is at 8, negative 2, and the vertex is at 7, negative 2. They want me to graph. So this is one where the center has been moved. So let's see what we can do. Center is over 4, down 2. Focus is over 8, down 2. Vertex is 7, down 2. Center, vertex, focus. Everybody good to there so far? Got a center, a vertex, and a focus. Now, which, which way? Is this an up-down or a right-left? Right, left. It's got to be right-left. Now, remember, it, the vertex... The vertex points is where it hits. So it's, it's going like this, isn't it? The focus is inside the branch, huh? So in the hyperbola, that's beyond the hyperbola branch, right? To be inside. That's kind of the idea. And we can go left, do the same thing. What is it? It's um, from 4 to 7 is 3, right? 1, 2, 3. So go 1, 2, 3, boom right here and boom right here. And it's going to go like that, huh? So there we go. Can we, can we write the equation now? write the equation. So when I go to write the equation, who's going to be in front? Is it going to be x squared in the front or y squared in the front? Yeah, because it's right left, it's going to be x squared in the front. Remember, if it, if it was an up-down branches, it would be y squared in the front. And it's minus because it's a hyperbola instead of plus. All right, now, the center is not 0, 0. The center is right here. And what do you always do with the center? Opposite, opposite. Yeah, just exactly like for all the other equations. Ops, ops, and that's what goes in parentheses next to x and y. The math Excel homework calls it h and k. So x minus 4 squared y plus 2 squared, right? Opposite of plus 4 is minus 4, and opposite of minus 2 is plus 2. We good there? All right, now, what is the a squared? What goes underneath x? What's that going to be? What is it? It's 3, right. It's how far from the center to the edge, right? That's always what the A and the B are, right? They're how far from the center to the edge of the shape. Right, left, always goes underneath X, so that's 3 squared. Now, how do I find the B, though? The B is how far up, down. I don't have the dotted box. I don't even want to draw the dotted box. So how do I find the B? The focus equation, which we've done a million times, right? The focus equation, C squared is A squared plus, because it's, the opposite of what's in the main equation. It's plus in the focus equation, the actual Pythagorean. So C squared, what is C? Four squared. How far from the center to the focus? Four. Four squared is A squared. And again, don't worry about which one's A and B because they're added. Who cares? Just throw one of them down as three squared. I don't care if it's A or B. So that's 16 is 9 plus B squared. Subtract. B squared is 7. B is the root of 7. So this is the root of 7 squared, and we got it. Which is just 7. You'd want to make that to 7. That's fine with me. I don't care on that. Is that good? Does that make sense on that? Wow, we didn't do too many on the hyperbola, did we? We did not do too many. Um... There's a couple of tricky asymptote ones that I wish I had had time to go over with you, but I didn't. Um, look on the other classes YouTube. You know, the Monday Thursday lecture. There's you guys are the you guys are the Math 4B TR Tuesday Thursday. They're the Math 4B MR Monday through. I just have them 50 minutes a day, four days a week, Monday through Thursday. I covered more of the asymptote ones um, in 10.4.
So yesterday's, anyway, so look on there. You can see that because both these are due, 10-3 and 10-4 are due. We can't spend any more time on it. They're due Tuesday. What is so, there What is there YouTube today? Uh, math 4B-MR, Monday, Thursday, MR. Yeah, so they're the other 4B. There's only two 4Bs. So they're the other 4B under my YouTube, right? Type in Brett Heron on YouTube. My name's listed on the syllabus. Am I my first name? Yeah, Brett Heron. Type, type it into YouTube. Look at their channel and get some more help on those other tricky hyperbola ones. Have a good weekend, guys. I'll see you Tuesday. Will I be marked absent if I wasn't here?